Welcome to Healing Hope and Health, the show proudly brought to you by Hospice of Washington County. I'm Bernadette Wagner, and today I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Alva S. Baker, Hospice of Washington County's Chief Medical Officer. Dr. Baker joins us today to talk about palliative care, a new initiative to better serve those suffering from serious or chronic illness. Dr. Baker has been practicing medicine for more than 40 years and is board certified in geriatric medicine and in hospice and palliative care medicine. He has a special interest in caring for persons with Alzheimer's disease and serves on the faculty of Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Dr. Baker, thanks for being here. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, maybe you could uh, start us off by explaining what is palliative care? Palliative care is an effort to help reduce suffering for whatever reason somebody might be experiencing suffering. So commonly it's thought of as pain, and certainly pain is a major focus of what we do, but any kind of symptoms that cause suffering, there may be, we call them non-pain symptoms, nausea, vomiting, shortness of breath, those kinds of things. Uh, if somebody is having an experience with that that is causing them to have pain or suffering, we want to help reduce that. Okay. And is palliative care a, uh, a relatively new medical concept, this idea that we can uh, address this specifically? It's really not new, but it's just kind of coming into fashion, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, palliative care has been growing as a concept over the past few years. Mm -hmm. and <clears throat> that Is it, it a new specialty, though? or No, it's not a specialty. It's part of hospice, hospice okay. and palliative medicine. Mm -hmm. And so th the goal of uh, palliative medicine is to work with people who are not at end of life necessarily. They might be, but they may just have been diagnosed with cancer and are suffering side effects of the medication they're having. Or they may have a chronic illness such as heart failure or chronic lung disease and be suffering with symptoms from those illnesses. And the goal is, again, to help symptom relief. Okay, and, and the Hospice of Washington County, is, uh, it's a new initiative for them, and it's going to be called Life Care of Washington County, correct? Correct, Life Care of Washington County. Okay, and uh, what kind of uh, services will you provide there? I know you have pain management, but what else will happen? At well, the goal of the program is to provide assistance to a person's personal physician in managing symptoms. Okay. So if somebody is having symptoms and their physician refers them to us, we will see them, take their history, do examination as pertinent to whatever their issues are. Uh, we will probably talk with them about their goals uh, mm -hmm. of care in the mm -hmm. long run and what their plans are for achieving those goals. We'll talk with them about other kinds of suffering that people frequently don't think about, maybe psychological suffering or emotional suffering or spiritual suffering, and then put together a comprehensive description of that person's illness and their suffering and make recommendations to their personal physician about how to perhaps better manage that. So in the palliative care model, you will actually be making the recommendations to the patient's physician, not directly to the patient? Both. Both, we, okay. I mean, we certainly will give recommendations to the patient, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the, the line of communication is from the physician to us and back to the physician. Okay, so people need a referral to come for that consultation. They should indeed. Okay. And um, this sounds a lot like hospice, but is it different in that it, uh, the difference is that you don't have to be near end of life to access these support systems? Yeah, there's two main differences. You do not have to be near the end of life as you need to be in hospice. And the other difference is that you can still be pursuing aggressive care. Mm -hmm. So you can have cancer, and even if the cancer is pretty bad, uh, you don't have to stop taking treatment to receive palliative care as you would as if you were entering into hospice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, uh, is it palliative care uh, available for people of all ages or is it just for older s citizens? All ages, mm -hmm. all problems, serious illness and chronic illnesses. Mm -hmm. So it's not limited just to older persons. Okay, and uh, this uh, Life Care of Washington County will be located in the women's, uh, well, in the Trilogy One building, which is the same building where uh, women's capital care is, right? Correct. Right. So that will be on the second floor of that building? Yes, we're on the second floor of that building. We have a very nice suite there. It's 
very attractive. Uh, that's Suite 200. So for our viewers, that address is 1165 Imperial Drive, and it's right off of um, Eastern Boulevard. Correct. And how many days a week will you be there? Initially, we'll be there two half days a week, uh, okay. Monday morning and Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. And the time will be expanded as the popularity and the need for consultations grow. Okay, and then one other thing I was going to ask is this, um, uh, the ability to offer palliative care right here in Washington County, I imagine that's gonna be a tremendous support to our local residents so that they don't have to get in the uh, car and drive to Baltimore or something. As of right now, do most communities have a palliative care um, opportunity to practice in their own home, in their own hometowns? No, most communities do not have this service, which is kind of a home-based service, outpatients mm -hmm. in the office and potentially at home. Most communities in their hospitals have a palliative care service that works with patients who are in the hospital. Okay. But once somebody leaves the hospital, that palliative care program doesn't exist anymore for them. And so the purpose of establishing life care is to make services available to the residents of Washington County who otherwise would not have access to that. Well, that's great. I really appreciate you uh, being here to explain that to me and to our viewers. Uh, again, the uh, address for the palliative care office is 1165 Imperial Drive, and the phone number is 301-671-2171. I'd like to thank Dr. Baker for joining us uh, today and for educating us about palliative care. More importantly, I'd like to thank him for providing this critically important specialized care right here in our community. According to the World Health Organization, palliative care is a treatment approach which improves the quality of life of patients, patients dealing with chronic illness through the prevention and relief of suffering by means of early identification, impeccable assessment, and the treatment of pain and other problems. We, the residents of Washington County, are fortunate now to have this medical specialty available to us in our own community. Stay with us, we'll be right back after this commercial break. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time my team. Expert care, close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. Harbors Carson Jewelers has been your community jeweler for over 110 years. We have the region's largest selection of diamonds, designer jewelry, including bridal, gold, and silver fashion jewelry, and fine Swiss timepieces. We strive to combine quality, expert personal attention, and affordable financing to create an exceptional shopping experience aimed at exceeding your expectations. At Carson's Jewelers, there's something for everyone that will bring a smile to that someone special in your life. Hi, I am Dr. Olenzak at the Pain and Spine Institute. I specialize in the most advanced procedures and technology available in pain management. At your visits and procedures, you will always see me for continuity of care. I would like to thank all of my patients for allowing me to provide you with the specialized care that you need. To give you this level of care requires a team. This is your team at the Pain and Spine Institute. To become a patient, call 301-739-7900 or go to painfree-md.com. Welcome back. Hospice Washington County is undoubtedly proud of the services it provides and enjoys sharing its successes. However, it's more significant and meaningful when a recipient of those services talks about the difference the organization has made in his or her life. Today, I'm pleased to introduce Lisa Morgan to talk about the care provided to her mother and the support and compassion she experienced from Hospice of Washington County's Bereavement Department. Welcome, Lisa. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Lisa, first let me say I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. I, Thank um, you. I, I know that it's tough to lose a parent, but I, I'm also grateful for your willingness to talk about the care provided to your mom and, and what that meant to you and your family. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Okay, about three years ago, my mom was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Um, by the time they found it, there was really nothing they could do. They did a little bit of radiation on her brain to try and give her a little bit of quality of life and give her, us a chance to, to say goodbye to her. Unfortunately, it only lasted about three weeks mm -hmm. and she kind of went into a sleep coma and we took her into the hospital and 
she really just didn't come back out of that. So rather than continuing driving to the hospital, hospice came in, brought in a bed, brought in nursing care, and brought her back home so that she could die peacefully at home with my dad and my brother. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they had nurses and doctors and social workers supporting your family. Was, uh, what did your family feel about the support they received from hospice? My dad is a little bit elderly, so it, w it was a little uncomfortable for him having someone in the home, but listening to him now years later, it really helped him because he was uncomfortable. I mean, they were married 45 years, but he was uncomfortable giving her a bath and doing the, the medical necessities that she needed. So he really talked heavily about the nurse caregiver that came in every day and gave her her bath and repositioned her and kind of got her comfortable so that all he had to do was kind of feed her things that you thought she still liked at the end and kind of just visit with her. Mm -hmm. And did you get to spend time with your mom? I, I got to spend time with my mom before she went into the sleep coma. I was home visiting her because we knew all of this was happening. Mm -hmm. And I was home visiting. I got to take her out shopping for her last hoorah. And unfortunately, that's my best memory to hold on to because that evening she started um, getting sick and right. went into the sleep coma. So, so you have that memory. Mm -hmm. So uh, you uh, received support and bereavement uh, services through Hospice of Washington County. Uh, can you tell us what that has meant to you, what you what's, uh, how it's helped you? That is really where I think hospice has helped me the most um, because I was really having difficulty coming back. I have two boys, nothing wrong with boys. I have two boys and a husband and they don't grieve quite like women do, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really having difficulty missing my mom. She was my best friend. She was who I talked to. So I finally, um, through my church, got word that hospice was doing these um, healing hope um, healing Hearts. Healing Hearts group seminars that you could go to and you just openly talked if you wanted to and you didn't have to if you didn't want to. And I finally reached out to hospice and, and went to the, one of those. And those support groups are open-ended and you drop in when you can? Yes, mm -hmm. and you can talk if you want and you don't have to talk if you mm -hmm. want. So my first day I didn't talk, my heart just beat really heavily. I cried every time someone else spoke, but you know, in time, I think I went for probably a year and a month or so, mm -hmm. and it really helped me. And I, I do think it's important, whether you're talking about your husband and your sons or the people in uh, that attend the group, to know that everybody grieves differently, and just being able to grieve at your own pace is such a gift. Right. So was this group uh, facilitated by a grief counselor? It was facilitated by Kathy Campbell with Hospice, and she did a wonderful job, and she's actually who thought that I could come share some of my experiences mm -hmm. with you guys. Great. And um, have you maintained any contact with the folks in that group? I mean, one of the things I know is that sometimes um, because you're talking to people who understand your position, there is a connection. There is. I did maintain contact with one gal. Um, we did movies on Friday nights sometimes and we, we hung out a couple times just because we had experienced the same kind of loss, you know, and had shared in the group. Um, she has gotten a new boyfriend now, so she's, you know, I feel like that was our purpose, was to help each other through it, and we stay in touch just over email now. That's great. And what would you say to somebody who's thinking about maybe taking advantage of the free uh, bereavement services and grief counseling offered by hospice, but is hesitant? What, what would you consider uh, counseling them? I, I would just uh, recommend to them to just give it a try. I mean, you know, it's a free service and it's a wonderful service and there's not many wonderful services out there that are free today. And I actually, on top of going to the support group, was doing one-on-one -on -one counseling, you know, through my employment assistance at work. And, you know, you have to pay for that. Uh -huh. So, and I feel like I got more out of the group. So I would just say, maybe put away your fears, let your heart pound a little bit, and, and see what's out there. That's great. And uh, there is free one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling also at hospice too, so that's maybe something that uh, people can consider as well. Okay. Well, Lisa, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. I'd like to thank Lisa for joining us for today's program and for sharing her experience with hospice and talk about the professional grief counseling she received. Loss never goes away, but grief diminishes as it is validated. Tom Zuba, an author and speaker, said it this way, quote, there are no quick fixes to grief, no easy answers. Every expression of grief that wants to be felt and honored and given its space must be allowed in order to heal. 
end of quote. If you are suffering due to the loss of a loved one, please allow Hospice of Washington County to help. Call us at 301-791-6360. Stay with us, we'll be right back after this short break. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call hospice today. Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. From the smallest item of jewelry to the largest ceramic elephant, every 10,000 Village's handcrafted product makes a remarkable journey. All over the world our products travel similar paths, over thousands of miles and years of artistic tradition. Our handcrafted gifts represent work that builds villages and sustains souls. They are the dream of a better life made real. Every product is a miracle. Welcome back. Now it is my pleasure to welcome Christy Kidd, Hospice Care Consultant for Hospice of Washington County. Christy, who earned a bachelor's degree in psychology and a master's degree in thanatology, both from Hood College, has been in her current position for almost a year. As a hospice care consultant, Christy works diligently to inform, educate, and explain the services provided by Hospice of Washington County to families, facility staff members, and all those interested in end-of-life care. She also hosts a number of events designed to connect those they serve with available resources and build positive relationships with health, the healthcare community. By joining us today on Healing Hope and Health, Christy will have the opportunity to explain her role with Hospice of Washington County, and I will have the opportunity to recognize her for the important work she does every day. Welcome, Christy. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Sure. So, Christy, first of all, tell us what is thanatology mm -hmm. and how did you come to study this in college? Um, thanatology is the study of death, dying, grief, and bereavement. It has different clinical aspects on death and dying as well as counseling aspects for uh, grief and bereavement, multicultural as well. And I first became interested uh, when I was a caregiver for my grandfather. Mm -hmm. I took a class on aging and that led into um, from gerontology to thanatology. So the idea that um, aging and death are the two inevitables, we're, we're all gonna have to face that. You started and progressed in your studies. Yes. Okay, great. How does the knowledge that you obtained uh, at Hood uh, reveal itself in your everyday work? Well, it's helped me be able to uh, work with families and patients um, from a heart center aspect with empathetic listening um, and being able to handle a variety of emotions and family dynamics um, when I go in to meet with uh, families, whether they're in, or patients, whether they're in homes or long-term care facilities. And having personally cared for your grandfather, does that enable you to relate to what other caregivers are going through? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell our viewers a little bit about some of the workshops and the programs that you and the other hospice care consultants offer? Sure, there's a variety of uh, different educational workshops that we offer that's related to hospice on grief and bereavement, as well as um, community resources, such as our Savvy Social Security presentation that we offer. Um, we just recently held a life-sustaining and saving treatments. Uh, we partner with Meritus on that. Um, we're doing an ethical wills presentation on how to write your legacy for um, family and maybe friends. Um, so there's a variety of different things that we do. And where uh, are these programs offered? And if somebody's interested in attending, where can they find the dates and times of all of the different programs offered through the hospice care consultants? So on our website, mm -hmm. that should be located or different. It depends where we're holding our workshops. Um, currently, we're b partnering with both Diacon Senior Living and Star Community, mm -hmm. and we're having a six-week presentation with each of um, those community partners. But anyone's welcome to contact They're me. all open to the public. Exactly. They're mm -hmm. all open to the public, and um, if they call the main number and ask for Christy Kidd, I'll help point them in the right direction. And that number is 301-791-6360. 
Uh, so, uh, Christy, I know that you hosted uh, that Savvy Social Security Planning, and it was really well attended. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you what the presentation was about and who presented? Sure. Mike May um, is a financial advisor from Sage, Sage Mark Lending um, in Northern Virginia, and I worked with him at a former hospice, and he's agreed to travel from Northern Virginia to uh, Washington County to give his presentation. And it's a wealth of knowledge on um, a variety of topics on how to maximize your Social Security that you may not necessarily know yourself or the Social Security Administration will readily hand over the information. So. Okay. So basically, you're not only providing uh, workshops for uh, seniors facing illnesses, you're also looking to support healthy uh, seniors with uh, long-term decisions and uh, sure. financial planning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's great. I know another uh, program that's coming up is the Veterans uh, Breakfast that Pete McMillan does, and uh, that's a very popular event. Um, that's going to be held uh, on uh, Saturday before Veterans Day, is that correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. And if you're interested in attending that, uh, give hospice a call. Um, Christy, uh, I was wondering if there's any special memory that you have in talking with a fa family that you might be interested in sharing that's been personally meaningful to you. You know, there's so many families that I meet with and patients, and there are some that you take a little bit with you each time. Uh, there's one patient in particular who had COPD, uh, lung cancer, uh, broken leg, and she just had a smile on her face and optimism and um, just radiated positivity. And anytime I'm having a bad day, I think about her. And um, it's, it's moments like that that's very rewarding. So you, you receive as much as you give? Oh, absolutely, if not receive more. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'd like to thank Christy for joining us and for the important work she does every day. Hospice Washington County is well known for pri providing end of life care but it also engages and supports healthy seniors through programs such as the Savvy Social Planning, Fraud Prevention, and the Veterans Breakfast. Whether you are strong and healthy or have limited time, Hospice of the County offers programs designed to support you. Please give us a call today if you're interested in these programs at 301-791-6360. Thanks, we'll be right back. Barbers Carson Jewelers has been your community jeweler for over 110 years. We have the region's largest selection of diamonds, designer jewelry, including bridal, gold, and silver fashion jewelry, and fine Swiss timepieces. We strive to combine quality, expert personal attention, and affordable financing to create an exceptional shopping experience aimed at exceeding your expectations. At Carson's Jewelers, there's something for everyone that will bring a smile to that someone special in your life. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time. My team. Expert care. Close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad he was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call hospice today, Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. Welcome back to Healing Hope and Health. Not too long ago, Robbie Doty appeared as a guest on the show to talk about a program he volunteered to lead with his friend Judah Ickes at the Hagerstown Community Life Center. Over the summer, the two Barber Ingram School for the Arts sophomores offered a five-week program called Facebook for Seniors. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome two of the seniors who participated in the class. I'm pleased to welcome Elaine Kalb and Carolyn Bartholomew to today's show and look forward to hearing their feedback on this class. Welcome Elaine, welcome Carolyn. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so uh, when you signed up for the class, was there something specific you hoped to learn or did you, and did you accomplish what you set out to learn? Well, I wanted to learn more about Facebook. I had a Facebook page, but I didn't know what to do once I got there. So I wanted to learn more about what to do. So I think I've learned more than I did when I first was there. How about you, Carolyn? 
Well, I had been on Facebook <clears throat> a couple of years, I suppose, and um, Elaine told me she had joined this uh, class and that it was free. So I thought, oh, I'll go and keep her company, and mm -hmm. I'm sure I can learn something. And I did. Uh -huh. um, I knew a lot of the things, but they taught me a lot of tips and shortcuts. And okay. And uh, you, uh, Elaine, when you were on Facebook before, you said you were just really looking at Facebook. Mm -hmm. Are you able now to, do you know how to do posts and post pictures? And I've done a picture. Um, I like something. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's new. <laughs> uh huh. And I uh, I know that uh, Robbie and Judah, when they were teaching the class, they reviewed some specific skills with you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, they did the security settings, and I had never done anything like that. So and that was new to that's learn. That's pretty important. That, yeah, that yeah. was pretty important. I was glad about that. And uh, what else did they do, Carolyn? Uh, actually, the last class, I believe it was, they showed us how to set up an event. Mm -hmm. And I actually did that last night. We're having a Labor Day party, and so everyone that's invited happens to be on Facebook, so I set up an event, and okay. it was kind of fun. Good. Mm -hmm. And I also know that he went over uh, how to search for friends, uh, messaging, mm -hmm. uh, and playing games. Did you all learn any games? <laughs> yeah, we like yes. the games. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the best part. Yeah, the yeah, best part. I, that I, I did do learn. know I walked in the class one day and you all were having a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> so what games were you playing on Facebook? Um, what's that one? Trivia Crack? Trivia Crack. Trivia Crack. That's the mm -hmm. one I like the best. I did Song Pop. Yeah, I didn't do the games before, but now we go back and forth, and you don't have to be on there constantly to do the game. You know, you can do the game a little bit and then go off, and, and then check the next back day later. check, you know. And uh, do you play with other friends as well, or just the two of us? I do. Right. Yeah. She does. So far, I'm just with Carolyn. Okay, well, you... you <laughs> I'm still new at it. Yeah, I should She's going to branch out. <laughs> Robbie and Judah taught you how to search for those friends. Yeah. So, right. So do you keep in touch with your children or grandchildren via Facebook? I do all the time. I, I mm -hmm. do. I have I don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I haven't gotten that brave yet. So some of the uh, participants, I think we had eight participants, were more computer savvy than others. What would you suggest that uh, if we offer this class again, uh, what we could do better to make it more, um, more successful and more um, personable for each participant? Well, um, maybe if you had a calendar or a schedule of what's going to be covered each week, Mm -hmm. Like if something you knew, you might not want to mm -hmm. go that week or, mm -hmm. you know, have schedule of what's going to be talked about that week. So you can pick that and choose. That way, the first week, if you don't have a Facebook account or even an email, people can go over that and it won't make the others sit through something right. they so, don't need so to. So if, if, like, some of our um, class participants didn't have um, emails or Facebook accounts, and people who already had that established were kind of waiting for them to right. catch up. Mm -hmm. So we might do a beginner and maybe a, a more advanced class. Mm -hmm. okay. Or just add a class at the beginning for the setup. Mm -hmm. And what, what did you think about Judah and Robbie as teachers? They were fun. They were good, very yeah. patient. Yeah, <laughs> willing to go over and repeat, you know. Yeah. They, they, they were a lot of fun and very polite. And I, I right. thought one of the things that I enjoyed the best is their willingness to uh, give um, personal attention mm -hmm. to each class participant. It was real one-on-one. -on -one. It was good. Right. Yeah. There was only two of us in the yeah. class, so we got yeah, in the super afternoon class. one -on -one. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you both so much for being here and for taking the class. Uh, spread the word. And uh, if we offer again, we hope to have uh, an even, big, either, even bigger turnout. Yeah, it was nice. It was very nice. I'd like to thank Elaine and Carolyn for joining me on today's show and providing feedback that will certainly guide future programs at Hospice of Washington County's three community life centers. If you, like Robbie and Judah, want to teach a program on a topic about which you're passionate, it could be anything, scrapbooking, fly fishing lures, building radio controlled model airplanes, crocheting, please let me know. The space at the Community Life Center is free to those willing to share their talents, knowledge, and skills. I will schedule your programs, publicize the class, and help organize needed materials. If interested, contact me at Hospice of Washington County at info at hospiceofwashingtoncounty.org or 301-791-6360. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Looking through the lens I see a smiling man I take a photograph In my mind you'll never fade 
million winding roads. Who knows what we will?